Hey there friends, it's Missy again. Thanks so much for stopping by today. I am back with a new layout for the Paige Evans design team and I'm going to be using the Horizon collection today. And I went ahead and did some work on my silhouette cameo here. I cut several pattern papers in 3x3 three three squares because I'm going to be using two of Paige's cut files. And I'm going to scrapbook this photo today. I don't know if you can see me, but I'm standing in front of these giant stacks of colorful rocks saw these last year they're out in las vegas and uh, they're called seven magic mountains and uh, this was on our way to creativation we went to vegas for a few days and then went to phoenix and i've been waiting for the perfect collection to use for this photo and this is it so this first cut file is called wonderlust and it's one of those big giant word title cut files that Paige has. She has several different ones, and this one is Wonderlust, but I'm not using the outlines. I'm using the inside, so I'm actually just going to use the letters instead of the outline of the letters. And the second cut file I cut on this navy blue paper from the project pad. This is also Horizon, and it's available exclusively at Joann's stores. And in the back of the cup or the back of the pad, there are several just solid color papers. And so I pulled the navy blue one out. And this cut file is called Globe Outline. And I've never used a globe on an on a layout before, definitely not a cut file. And I thought this is the perfect opportunity to do that. And so I want to kind of incorporate this earth onto a background and then work all of these colorful letters around it somehow and I'm just kind of playing around here trying to get an idea of how I want to organize the letters because I want the photo to stand out but I also want everything else to stand out. So I'm going to use this pattern paper as my background. This is from Horizon also. It's paper number eight and it's light blue and there is a slight pattern on it but I consider this more of a solid paper because uh, it, it's going to make a great background. It's going to be easy to add mixed media to. And what I'm going to do is I'm kind of trying to see where the open spots are on this earth. And I'm going to just use my finger here to smudge some white gesso primarily on the areas in between all the navy blue there and uh, those little cutout spots. And um, I'm going to bring in some colors that match all of those letters. So uh, yeah, this is definitely not a technical thing here. I use my hands more than I use anything else, I think. And uh, this is the easiest and quickest way to smudge down some gesso is just to get your hands in there. And I thought I would add a little bit of dimension and uh, depth to this cut file here. So I'm just dipping my finger in the gesso and then kind of smudging around the edges to kind of give it a little bit of a worn look. And it's amazing what this can do to just this solid dark paper. I think it instantly makes it look a little more uh, textured. It looks a little more realistic just by adding that to the edges there. So I think I'm going to situate the photo over to the right, kind of where you see it now, and then work all these letters around the left side of it. And I love how this looks. Um, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. When I can't think, I uh, tap my fingernails on my desk there. But uh, I'm trying to decide what colors I'm going to use and where I'm going to put which color. Uh, I'm going to use lots of my shimmer sprays here and the plastic packaging technique where you just spray the color onto the plastic, you flip it over and press it down. I spray a little bit more water to add a little more there and then smudge it around some more. And it's the easiest, quickest way to get lots of color on your background, I think. So I'm gonna do pink over to the right side and then over here to the lower left side, I'm gonna do some yellow and orange. And again, I'm just doing the same thing. I'm using the plastic packaging, some water, smudging it down, dabbing it up. There's no right or wrong way to do this, no rhyme or reason. Um, it's just, you know, you could definitely use a brush. You could spray it directly onto the paper now I did want to add a hint of orange to this, so I pulled an orange shimmers and dabbed just a little bit on there to add a, some color variation because there is some orange right there in the R. And I don't use orange a lot. Um, orange is kind of like purple, although I have used purple more recently than um, I have in the past. And so every now and then I like to just use those colors that are kind of generally considered hard to use, I think. And uh, since all these colors are in this collection, I felt like it was perfect 
time to use those. And see how this looks totally different when I put the, uh, the globe back on top of it. Because when I'm just making it here, it just looks like two splotches of color. And I always say the backgrounds always look a hot mess until you add everything back on top. So on the upper left area, I thought I would do green. And I know I've said this recently, I'm not a grass green type person, like in that, that in color. Like that color alone, it's pretty, but it's not one of my go-to colors. But when it's mixed with all these other colors, it's amazing. I don't know how to describe that, but I love it in this collection. So, um... I'm trying to find just the right amount of green here. I'm mixing, I think I mixed three different greens there to match that in that you see sticking out there. And I think I got it there. And I didn't want to go with any more blue on the background because there's plenty of it. I do, I take that back. I do add some blue splatters at some point, but they're very minor. Um, I just didn't want to add a bunch of blue watercolor because the background is blue, that earth is blue, and uh, there's a lot of blue in the photo also. So yeah, it's kind of like putting a puzzle together. I put it on, I take it off, I add some color. So now I can't really see a lot of the pink. So I realize I need to add more pink to the outside of the photo there. And to me, this is part of the fun of making a mixed media layout is just kind of doing a little of it and then seeing, seeing how it looks, put everything back and see, you know, what's covered up and what's visible. And if too much is covered up, do you need to add more? you know, that type of thing. It's kind of a guessing game. So off camera, I decided to add some stitching. I went around very carefully and very slowly with my sewing machine and just some white thread to add a little more texture and interest to this cut file here. And I love how this is looking already. And I'm glad I decided to use the navy blue because I think it really it makes the colors in the photo pop. Um, I did add some adhesive foam. That's what I'm doing there. And I'm going to go ahead and glue down this earth here and um, before someone asks I'm using the scotch tacky glue and that is a fine liner bottle and you can get those at Hobby Lobby on the same aisle where they sell the model cars and you can also order them online from Amazon I suggest getting the one with the yellow tip and not the blue the yellow one is a little bit bigger and this glue works perfectly you can tell how worn down my bottle is I've used it for probably over three years, the same bottle, and I've never had it, any, it clogged or anything. So I highly recommend that glue and that bottle. All right, so I'm going to start to rebuild everything, and I am going to overlap the photo onto some of the letters, but you can still clearly read what it says. Now, I'm going to use my tape runner here to glue the letters down um, in case they're not straight or in case I change my mind, I can move them. Uh, if I use the liquid glue, that stuff dries pretty fast and it's pretty permanent. And so um, if I use my ATG, I can peel it up if I need to. It's still pretty pretty uh, tight glue, or not tight glue, but um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's pretty strong tape, but I can still peel it up if I need to. All right, so I'm going to glue down the photo. I did add another little piece of foam over to the right underneath it so it would match up with the height. And now I'm going to start to work on the smaller things. Now, I'm going to use that globe. It's a paper clip from Horizon. Everything here is from Horizon. I tried to use this little travel sticker. This is from the Joann's paper pad. But the more I looked at it, the more it was... it. I don't know. It was just too colorful for this layout. I felt like I might need something more solid color. Oh, this is my daughter. She had to come get some kisses, and she likes to lay her head on my desk. So that was Paige. That was my little Paige. I have my own Paige. Um, yeah, so I thought that was sweet. I had to give her some loving. So I decided to take that off and kind of go another route, and I go for these epoxy stickers, and I'm going to go for Explore. I like the fact that it's yellow, and then the little sticker underneath it, it's got some orange in it, and it says Adventure Awaits. And then this little pink sticker, um, I think it says New Roads, Open Roads, something about roads. And that's from the Joanne sticker sheet right there. Kind of got it over to the side. And then this little uh, green heart. And I feel like the Explore sticker is better since it's one solid color. And the, the travel one I love. I love that watercolor look on it, but it was so colorful I felt like it just kind of got lost because I already have multiple colors going everywhere. I'm gonna make sure that's straight. 
because it almost always is crooked. When I eyeball things, they are always crooked. So I'm going to add some thread and I'm going to use hot pink over to the right and that's going to help draw your eye to that area uh, since I've got kind of like if a you've heard people talk about the visual triangle so you see the W is hot pink and then you go over to the right there's hot pink and then you go back over to the L and that's hot pink and that's kind of the idea of a visual triangle you've got three things of one color or one style it kind of just drags your eye from one corner to the next side and then back and that's not always a rule I don't always do that you know and you don't have to do that there's no law that says you have to have a visual triangle but sometimes it does work and it does help to help your eye move around the page so I added some blue thread I've got the pink thread I got some green thread up behind the W and um, now I'm going to add some little things. I try to add some more stickers. I do add a sticker, a globe sticker, underneath the globe paper clip. I got that from the Joann's paper pad. And I do add a couple of heart stickers just to add more color around the page. So now I've got a green visual triangle there. This little sticker is from the sticker sheet from Horizon and it says on the map. And I'm going to add that right above the photo. And there, here's where I'm going to start to add some flowers. At first I wasn't going to do any florals on this, but I thought that they were the perfect addition. I'm going to add that little vase. I just cut the vase off and then stuck it sideways underneath the edge of the D. And you would never know that that was a vase of flowers. So that's another tip. You don't always have to use stickers or, or things like they are that little green thing that I just stuck over uh, to the left of the photo has got a wheelbarrow attached to it but you would never know it just looks like some green leaves so you know you can always cover stuff up cut stuff off trim something up there are no rules saying that you have to use a vase full of flowers if you want to just use the flower part then cut off the vase almost getting done here I did tuck some flowers some yellow flowers in between the U there and I'm gonna make sure everything is glued down and then to make sure that those letters did pop off of that blue I went around them and traced with my white gel pen there just gives them a little crisper edge and then I'm gonna add some white splatters by watering down some white acrylic paint and then using my brush to flick it around and I love white paint on top of darker colors and I feel like this is a perfect layout for that because you can really see it and uh, that's just cheap white acrylic paint from Walmart and the craft section nothing fancy gold color shine just because I felt like adding some gold because again the gold looks so pretty on these darker bolder colors it really stands out on those papers and then the last thing I'm going to do is my journaling. I do use my ruler and I'm going to do the journaling right here on the bottom part of the dark blue paper. And I'm going to use that white gel pen again because it is definitely going to look great against that dark blue. The white just stands out. And I did add the date underneath that, but that's the final layout. I love how this turned out. I was so excited to finally scrapbook a travel layout using this collection because there's so many travel things and I hadn't done that yet. So this was fun and I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you got some fun ideas to try on your next layout or your next project. And uh, have you ever combined two cut files on one layout? That was fun to do also. So let me know if you have any questions about anything at all I will link the horizon collection down below as well as all of Paige's cut files and make sure you check out her Facebook group because she gives away free cut files all the time I'll link that down below also if you're not a member anybody can join so I hope to see you over there thank you so so much for watching and I will see you guys next time